Welcome. Um, so the next talk will be uh, on what the European uh, Commission is doing towards uh, making data fair in the, the context of the European research area. Uh, my name is Daniel Meach and I work for the University of Virginia um, and I'm part of an expert group that is writing a report that should uh, help the European Commission decide what it wants to do in terms of fair data. Um, since we're here at, at FORCE, um, I will try to make this interactive, so I encourage you to basically interrupt me whenever uh, you think is good. There is a talk uh, about this uh, specific topic, and it has a recorded version, so that if you want to go to more the classical kind of monologue uh, kind of thing, you can do this. Um, and this talk is on Zenodo, so it has a DUI and so on. Um, it also links to some other um, metadata. So this talk was given at a, a separate event like a few months ago. Um, but what I want to focus on uh, in this session is actually the interaction. So we wrote this report. There is a draft report out that is public. And we uh, are supposed to deliver the final report uh, basically in November not too far away. And um, we had a uh, consultation period where we presented the draft to the public in, in two different versions um, because it, uh, it has two components. One is a report on the current state of affairs and then what could be done. The other one is more or less an action plan. So it has a certain uh, time component uh, and sequence component. And th those two documents we treat in a different fashion. Um, so first, so we have these two documents. One of them is the report, the other one is the action plan. Um, so um, one of them we put onto GitHub. The other one, uh, the, the main report, we left as a Google Doc. Uh, so, and we made it uh, commentable by everyone. And we got hundreds of comments there. Um, the uh, report contains a set of um, recommendations uh, on things that different stakeholders in the data ecosystem should be doing. And um, those uh, different uh, recommendations we've uh, turned into issues on the GitHub repo um, so that uh, people could discuss those in, uh, recommendations individually uh, rather than uh, the entire uh, report and so. And there again, we, we got uh, really lots of uh, comments from people uh, all over Europe, different kinds of stakeholders and also beyond uh, Europe. Uh, we're now in the process of uh, finalizing all this uh, feedback in the revision of the main document, which is not drafted in public. Um, and uh, basically because, yeah, European Commission doesn't have the habit of doing such things in public. Already doing this on Google Docs and GitHub was not very the usual way of doing things. Um, so um, that's the general background. I w actually wanted to go into the documents and uh, discuss some of those individual elements, but I don't have all of this in mind. And uh, so I will go back to this, uh, this presentation, which is a bit uh, more classical. But while you're maybe browsing this thing and something com uh, comes up, feel free to uh, just interrupt me. So I'll now go to this uh, presentation here which is thankfully de delivered to us and still accessible. <laughs> um, um, and so a little bit of background. I guess uh, there's no, not much that needs to be said about the fair principles here, um, because they come out of the um, force um, community, basically. Um, it's just that the, uh, the most formal uh, rendition of it was, was published in this paper uh, in 2016. And uh, the, the gist of it is basically to um, change the research ecosystem such that uh, machines can participate um, more usefully than they can right now. Uh, so basically, the, the underlying thought is consider the machines as being your collaborators, your colleagues uh, in some way. And then what keeps them from doing this uh, or what could be if, if they were to actually act in this fa uh, fashion. Um, and uh, they, the principles are uh, written in a very generic fashion so that uh, they can be uh, basically applied across disciplines. Uh, this has uh, some advantages so that we can, we can all use this FAIR acronym, which is a, a nice acronym. Everybody likes it. Uh, and people don't really like to say, well, I'm unfair or, or you should be unfair or anything like this. Um, so it helps with advocacy. It helps with uh, keeping the conversation going. But what it does not do is specify details of implementation. And um, this is uh, some of the uh, angle from which uh, the report and the action plan come in. Again, since we're uh, talking about the entire European uh, research ecosystem and we try to actually uh, not limit it to Europe, uh, 
the, uh, the report and the action plan, they can, can't be very specific either. But they can zoom in on some of the things that the uh, principles uh, haven't highlighted in detail. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, what we tried. So here is uh, what basically is set in the, uh, in the setup of the, uh, this uh, expert group. We should develop recommendations on what needs to be done to turn the fair data principles into reality in the European Commission and European member states and at the international level. Um, um, then we should propose indicators, measurements, things that can actually be uh, quantified or determined in a reliable way to measure the progress on making this uh, fair data a real reality. Um, then we should develop a fair data action plan, uh, which basically consists of a list of concrete actions um, that should be included in the final report. Uh, we should run workshops. We are basically done with this workshop part um, with experts from relevant um, backgrounds. And uh, we should launch and disseminate the final version of this um, action plan in November. There is a specific event uh, at the European Presidency in Vienna then. And uh, we should contribute to uh, the wider ecosystem. So there is the open science policy platform. There is a whole set of initiatives in Europe that are, are meant to prepare the next framework program. We're now in Horizon 2020. 2020 is not too far away anymore. So they're planning the next framework program. And um, in that context, uh, some major policy changes are expected. And the details are all in the working. And um, I don't know much about them. And even if I knew, I, I wouldn't be able to tell much about it. So that's the general setting. Uh, another aspect of it, we should at least try to come up with a mechanism to include costing and uh, finance aspects into that, because many policies, they come, uh, they're basically unfunded mandates. They tell people, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Uh, but they don't actually provide uh, the finances or the resources to actually do it, uh, which then leads to low compliance uh, with the policies and doesn't improve the system very much. OK, so in the report, uh, we basically sliced the uh, this ecosystem or the range of problems uh, or issues to tackle into four key steps. So we should define uh, the FAIR principles and uh, appropriately and apply them um, in the different contexts. We should develop and support a sustainable FAIR data ecosystem that is not just about the data, but uh, takes into account the things that interact with the data, like, for instance, software, repositories, things like that. Um, we, show, uh, we should ensure that fair data and uh, uh, that, that the data are fair and that there are cer certified services that actually support the fairness uh, of the data. And uh, we should em embed fairness on fair data and the, this fair ecosystem more in the culture of uh, research practice. So it's not just a technical issue and a political issue, it's also a social issue, a cultural issue. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, the, the main report is divided in uh, six main topics, and uh, it takes into account all of those four different steps uh, from the perspective of those uh, six topics. And those topics are policy, culture, technology, then also skills and training, uh, metrics, evaluation, and then this cost aspect. Um, in uh, one way to slice this uh, landscape is to look at, OK, which kind of stakeholders do we have? And, um, then um, try to look at that ecosystem from their respective perspective. And uh, so that's what we're also doing here. Um, so one important stakeholder, of course, in the research ecosystem is uh, the research community or are the research communities. In the feedback we got on this particular um, aspect of the report, actually, people uh, missed the individual researcher. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I think that's a valid uh, thing to, to, to think about. But of course, uh, if we're talking about communities, they are con uh, composed of individuals. And um, if uh, something doesn't really make sense for a community, uh, but for an individual or vice versa, then there are certain oddities that need discussion. And that would be within focus of the report. The same goes for data services. So uh, a range of um, other stakeholders that we try to identify and that we try to take into account when discussing those um, issues. And here again, we, we're uh, trying to bridge the gap from both the perspective of individual data services and data services in general as a class. 
Um, another one is data stewards. Here, uh, a frequent comment that we received was uh, it needs to be clarified um, what the role or definition of data stewards is. Do we actually expect every researcher to become a data steward, or do we um, expect data stewards to be basically a new um, profession that just is emerging, which it, which it is already, and then they just get more tightly integrated with what the researchers do, um, things like that. Then standards bodies, um, because fair, fairness is uh, in, in many ways around um, related to standards. Coordination fora, it's places like this for us, it's uh, the Research Data Alliance and, and similar fora where communities come together and d discuss standards, policies, and all these kind of things. It's policy makers themselves. So um, it's uh, very important that the document that we draft is uh, applicable to um, not just the researchers, but also that it fits with the higher uh, po political agendas. Um, because if we can't fit it in there, then uh, well, it will be blocked in some way. Um, and uh, so um, it has to fit the, the priorities that are being set in different political contexts, specifically by the European Commission, but has to take into account the context in the member states and internationally. Then the research funders are, of course, important because, well, if they fund uh, certain things uh, more than, than others, uh, then that is something that the communities around them will pay attention to. Um, the same goes for institutions. I was just in another uh, talk where we heard about the policies at institutions in terms of uh, tenure and promotion criteria and uh, what these entail. Um, they, they didn't specifically talk about fairness, but I, my guess would be that uh, the fairness of research outputs, it's not very much taken into account right now when uh, reviewing people for tenure and promotion. And then uh, there are other stakeholders like uh, publishers, um, who also play a, a role traditionally in terms of publishing papers and um, increasingly in terms of a broader role, like also helping to publish data, software, and workflows. Then, uh, the uh, well, we, while discussing this complex ecosystem, we try to break things down into uh, units that are actually easily handleable. And so, um, many of the um, discussions, uh, recommendations that we do there, uh, they refer to basically fair data objects. And uh, we use this term um, because many of the arguments that we're making or many of the discussions, many of the issues that are being discussed here, they are not specific to data. They also apply, for instance, to metadata, they apply to software, they apply to services, and so on. And uh, so we try to discuss these issues in a, in a broader sense when it makes sense, and then we zoom in on specific aspects, things that are specific to data or metadata or software or even training things uh, when they are specific. And uh, Th those data objects, they basically have a core, which is uh, data. Then uh, uh, these data are surrounded by identifiers. Um, so uh, what, what type of data is it? Uh, what uh, method was it generated uh, from? Uh, what instrument uh, was used and so on? Then uh, standards and, and code, like uh, once you, you have it, uh, w like what did you act actually measure? Uh, and does that uh, have an equivalent in some uh, formal vocabulary? And then the metadata uh, about all of that, like when was the data uh, acquired? How much is it? What's the, the file size and these kind of things? Um, and then um, the uh, basic recommendation is uh, we, there should be a cloud of registries for all these uh, different elements in the ecosystem. So policies. Right now, most of those policies that exist in a data sharing or fair data ecosystem, they're just things that sit in a PDF somewhere on a website, maybe for some time, or uh, if you're lucky, it's an HTML page or so. But uh, the policies about fairness, they are very rarely following any of the fair principles. Um, so it would be nice if we start eating our own dog food, uh, and basically think about how to, uh, to make those policies more uh, fair, which would also help with actually um, making them more compliable. Uh, because if the policies are vague and not easily findable, then you don't even know which policies you have to comply with, and so on. Then uh, other components that are central on, uh, on this, I actually had a poster, 96, I think, or 97. Um, 
the, that is data management plans. Uh, so the European Commission has a certain data management plan template, uh, which we're also asked to comment on. And uh, in the, the vision that we're painting here in this document, uh, the data management plan plays a central role in actually um, linking the different aspects of a research project together. Um, so we actually intend them to be used for actually managing data rather than just ticking a box on the grant submission process. Um, then again, identifiers, standards I already mentioned, and uh, repositories. Like the, there should be a uh, defined way where to put uh, things of a different uh, sort, of a specific sort, which also will then facilitate the F in the fair, the findability. If you know where to look for, uh, then it's uh, more likely that you're actually going to find the things that you're looking for. Yeah, then um, this ecosystem uh, can also be um, regarded then from different perspectives. So we look at, um, for instance, the skills and the metrics and the rewards and uh, the investments that need to be made in the ecosystem in order to move us towards um, the FAIR principles. Here we see the DMP, the Data Management Plan, as a central player in the, that keeps it all together. Um, and uh, yeah, so for, for skills, for instance, uh, there are lots of skills that are uh, necessary in order to actually behave properly in this ecosystem. And that's not just skills of, of people, but it's also uh, kind of um, properties, characteristics, features of systems. Um, and the skills are technical sometimes. They're, they might involve communication, across, uh, for instance, between a researcher and a librarian or uh, the data management people and the, the data stewards, the policy people, and so on. Then in the report, we're looking at the number of case studies where certain aspects of FAIR are really deeply embodied in the way different, uh, let's say, fields uh, or communities are handling their data. Um, so for instance, in linguistics, there's the uh, DOBES initiative, or in astronomy, there's the virtual observatory. So we zoom in on those cases a little bit and uh, see um, how uh, those communities are doing things in the FAIR data realm, uh, and sometimes even decades before the FAIR acronym was um, um, coined. Uh, another aspect is the timely sharing of the FAIR data. So the, the, the FAIR principles don't make any explicit uh, reference to timeliness of the sharing. They just uh, talk in general terms about kinds of sharing. But in public health emergencies or other kinds of emergencies, maybe uh, we need specific mechanisms uh, or certain emphasis on certain aspects of data uh, or metadata in order to help them actually address those emergencies. And uh, another um, one of those case studies is Wikidata. Uh, it doesn't come out of the research space, but it comes out of a community-driven space, very uh, public-facing um, community initiative and that happens to be fair even though it wasn't um, designed after those principles it was more or less contemporary it happens to be fair by default and can actually help make research data more fair uh, we just had a session on this earlier today um, yeah, and then there's uh, lots of discussion which actually also created confusion in some of the comments that we received. So it's important to keep the fair and the open as two different dimensions. They work best when they come together, but they're useful on their own. So if you put out a PDF somewhere on the web that contains useful information that would otherwise not be accessible, that is progress. If you make that PDF, uh, that information machine accessible and uh, ac uh, make it uh, accessible to some other services or systems that is progress as well, even if the entire world doesn't have access to it. But if you bring the two together, make it public and accessible for machines, then you have real impact. Um, and so it's important to keep in mind that this uh, group doesn't work on openness, but uh, that there is lots of um, interaction between fairness and openness. And so uh, in summary, we <laughs> follow more or less a slogan that was coined by the commission at some point, as open as possible, as close as necessary, uh, but keep, keep that in mind uh, from a fair perspective. And then the Fair Data Action Plan basically has 34 recommendations that we try to make tweetable. Uh, because one, one, yeah, one problem with policies is uh, if they're too long, nobody will read them. But if they fit into a tweet, nobody can say, well, I don't have the time to read that, <laughs> right? And so we really want, we, we really want those uh, recommendations to be accessible, to be usable, and uh, so to engage the community around that. So tweetability was a criterion we used. Yeah, and then here you have the details, and Martin is standing there, because we also still want to discuss, and for the next steps here you have uh, some links 
the comments were welcome until August 5, which is passed now, but we really received a lot. And um, also, even though for this particular thing, uh, the feedback period might be might have ended, this discussion about how we can move the ecosystem towards more fair, this will not end with that report. So um, any further interactions are most welcome. Thank you. And if you want to ask a question, please go to this microphone or have a comment. So I'm interested in um, how this process may eventually lead to unlocking of funding at the European Commission level to support these kinds of processes, or whether that's something that's like in contention here. Um, well, one of the reasons why they asked us to provide some estimates of the co costs and some mechanisms on how to build that into the ecosystem is because they're aware of that being an issue. And so as far as I can tell, uh, they certainly plan to address it. Uh, whether that will work, we will see, yeah. uh, but at least it is, um, it, they're conscious of this and there are uh, their other teams, so they, they have um, commissioned a certain study that looks specifically uh, on cost effects. Um, and uh, yeah, there are other working groups that do similar things um, and I, I think this will be addressed. And uh, But yeah, there is no good prototype to look for. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I know that there are similar discussions happening in different contexts, like in the US and Canada, for instance, or um, in South Africa and Japan. And uh, we're interested in, in like tying the, those efforts together. And so that's why we're also uh, engaging with fora like the Research Data Alliance or so, where uh, there is really a global perspective. But it's also important that these recommendations then trickle down to the individual workflows of the specific communities in the field and the individual research in, in the end. And so it is a, a large scale um, discussion. Um, and yeah, you're all welcome to partic participate in that. Of the 34 recommendations, have you identified any as priorities, or which ones do you feel should be the priorities? Um, basically, yes, but it's not yet uh, kind of um, ready to, to to be publicized. So it's in a draft version, and in the in the draft, we do make uh, some things, but also we have taken into account some of the feedback. So there is a little bit of uh, adjustment, uh, and that is just not public yet. Any more questions? Okay, then again, thank you, Daniel, and well, thank you.